The Roman Legacy from the Founding of Rome to the Fall of Constantinople. Segment 1 The Founding of Rome and the Establishment of the Republic. The history of ancient Rome begins with its legendary founding in 753 BC by Romulus, who, according to Roman mythology, was the son of the god Mars and the priestess Rhea Silvia. Romulus is said to have founded Rome on the Palatine Hill after the infamous act of killing his twin brother Remus during a dispute over where their city should be located. According to legend, Romulus and Remus were raised by a she-wolf after being abandoned on the banks of the Tiber River, a story that has become a symbol of Rome itself. The early period of Roman history is marked by the rule of a succession of seven kings. These monarchs, starting with Romulus and ending with Tarquinius Superbus, played critical roles in laying the foundational structures of Roman society and its institutions. Under the kings, Rome grew from a small settlement of huts into a city that was structured with temples, markets and a political system that included religious and civic duties intertwined. For example, the construction of the Cloaca Maxima, one of the world's earliest sewage systems, is attributed to King Tarquinius Priscus. The reign of the last king, Tarquinius Superbus, was characterized by tyranny and abuse of power. His expulsion in 510 BC marked a significant turning point in Roman history. The ousting of Tarquinius Superbus was precipitated by the infamous rape incident involving his son, Sextus Tarquinius, and Lucretia, a noblewoman whose tragic fate incited the Roman populace against the monarchy. Lucius Junius Brutus, one of Rome's first consuls, played a key role in establishing the Republic by leading the revolt that ousted the last king. The regal period in Rome denotes the initial phase of the city's history, characterized by its legendary founding and the reign of kings. The end of the regal period led to the foundation of the Roman Republic, fundamentally changing the course of Roman governance. Segment 2 The Roman Republic, until 200 BC, Expansion and Conflict The Roman Republic, established in 509 or 510 BC, following the expulsion of the last Roman king, marked a new era of Roman governance. Initially, the Republic faced numerous challenges from neighboring Latin tribes and Etruscan cities. These early conflicts were crucial in consolidating Rome's power within the Italian peninsula and in forming the legendary Roman Legion, a citizen-soldier army that would become a cornerstone of Roman military might. The structure and discipline of the Roman Legion were crucial to Rome's military success. Each legionary was a Roman citizen, and their rigorous training and organization set them apart from other armies of the time. Throughout the 5th and 4th centuries BC, Rome engaged in a series of wars with neighboring tribes, including the Sabines, the Equi, and the Volsci. These wars were instrumental in expanding Roman territory and influence, and in integrating a wide range of peoples into the Roman domain, which was crucial for its expansion. The conquest of the Etruscan city of Vei in 396 BC, for instance, was a significant victory, doubling the territory under Roman control. Rome was sacked by the Gauls in 390 BC, an event that marked a critical point in the city's early history. This incident is often referred to as the Battle of the Allia, named after the river where the Roman forces met the Gauls, led by their chieftain Brennus. The sacking of Rome in 390 BC was a shocking event for the Romans and led to significant military reforms, including the construction of the Servian Wall to protect the city. As Rome's power grew, it increasingly came into conflict with other major powers in the Mediterranean, particularly the Greek city-states and the Hellenistic kingdoms that had emerged from the conquests of Alexander the Great. 
Rome's first major interaction with the Hellenistic world came during the Pyrrhic War, 280-275 BC, against King Pyrrhus of Epirus, whose costly victories against Rome gave rise to the term Pyrrhic victory. The expansion into the Greek sphere marked a new phase of Roman expansionism, leading to the First and Second Punic Wars against Carthage, a powerful city-state in North Africa. The First Punic War, 264 to 241 BC, began primarily over control of Sicily and ended with Rome's decisive victory, establishing Roman dominance over the island. The Second Punic War, 218 to 201 BC, however, was marked by the Carthaginian general Hannibal's extraordinary crossing of the Alps into Italy, bringing the war to the Roman heartland. Hannibal's crossing of the Alps with his war elephants is one of the most famous military feats in history. Despite facing tremendous challenges, including harsh weather and difficult terrain, he managed to bring his army into Italy, posing a significant threat to Rome. Despite initial successes and devastating battles such as Cannae, Hannibal was eventually repelled, and the war concluded with the Battle of Zama in 202 BC, where Scipio Africanus decisively defeated Hannibal, marking a turning point in Rome's history. The Battle of Zama was a decisive victory for Rome, where Scipio Africanus used innovative tactics, like manipulation of the elephants and flexible formation, to defeat Hannibal. This battle effectively ended the Second Punic War and solidified Rome's dominance over Carthage. By the end of the Second Punic War, Rome had not only secured its position as the dominant power in the Western Mediterranean, but also laid the groundwork for future expansion into the Eastern Mediterranean and beyond.